Welcome to Lesson 11 of GraviCalc Marble Computers, where each week we build a new digital logic computer circuit out of Gravitrax Marble Runs. We're doing this to learn how computers and other electronics work deep down inside. If you had a computer named Texas, then you could say we're figuring out what goes on deep in the heart of Texas. Okay, that was a corny joke. Besides, who would name their computer Texas? I think people would be more likely to name their computers Lee in Thought. Then their computers could be deeply in thought. Or I'd name my computer You're Inside because then I could figure out what goes on deeper inside my computer. I'm the Masked Marble and my videos are about all things Gravitrax. Speaking of deep, did you know how deep God's love for us is? It is so deep that he was willing to sacrifice the life of his only son to redeem us from the death that results from our sins. Jesus himself said, no one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. Now some people have suggested that God was being mean to his son Jesus by sending him to die for us. But no, the Bible predicted that Jesus' sacrifice was only a temporary hardship that he would endure and that God would raise him back to life afterwards. So even though Jesus' death was the greatest sacrifice that could be given, it was not a permanent death. It was not the end of Jesus' existence. It was a hardship that Jesus had to go through. The Apostle Paul said that Jesus lives today at the right hand of God the Father and is always interceding on behalf of those who trust in him. And the Bible says that Jesus went through the hardship of his crucifixion willingly because of the joy that he knew would result from it when people who were separated from God by their sin would be forgiven and restored to God as a result of Jesus' suffering. It's kind of like when your mom or dad tells you to do the chores. You may find the chores difficult, but your parents understand that you'll need to know how to do those chores once you grow up. So that once you get your own house, it isn't full of stinky garbage and dirty dishes and laundry. The pain and sacrifice of learning to do chores now will be worthwhile later on. So good parents let their children go through hard things if the sacrifice is worth the reward. Guess what, Gravit Calkers? I've got good news. Today's Marble Computer builds a fully automatic version of last week's 2-bit adder, using only two starter sets, one scoop, and one volcano. I was thinking it might take three starter sets, but thank God he helped me figure out how to keep the track simple. Last week in Lesson 10, we built a 2-bit adder. The problem was, we had to act as our own computer clock. We had to run the adder for the ones place, then wait for that adder to finish its calculation. Then we had to push a second launch pad to run the adder for this twos place. This week our computer will add a timer circuit that will automatically run the twos place adder after the ones place adder has had time to pass along its carry bit. In other words, the entire track will run by itself and it won't pause in the middle like last week's marble computer. Plus, we get to use the self-loading volcano trick this week. Woohoo! This week's lesson will be short. If you haven't watched the previous marble computer videos, you'll want to hold your horses and skedaddle back to watch them first because today we're going to blaze a trail through the desert and we won't be stopping for lollygaggers. Okay, it's Gravitrax time. Let's build a fully automatic 2-bit adder out of Gravitrax. You'll need two starter sets, a scoop, and a volcano. Sorry, a vertical pro starter set will not have enough height tiles to build this track. Build today's marble computer by loading this Gravitrax app code into the free Ravensburger Gravitrax app, then switch into manual mode to get the build instructions. Today's Marble Computer will not fully run in the Gravitrax app because the app does not allow self-loading volcanoes. Now go ahead and pause the video and build the track.
If you want more practice this week filling out logic tables, you can print out the blank logic table from last week and fill it out as you run this track. Before we run our 2-bit adder marble computer, let's look at what we added. You're familiar with the 1-bit adders that we used over the past two weeks, but I never really explained how they work. Let's look at them briefly. Remember when we built the half adder in lesson 8, how we actually combined two logic gates to get our outputs of the sum bit and the carry bit? Looking at the logic diagram of the half adder, you can see we combined an XOR gate and an AND gate. Well, the logic diagram for a full adder has five logic gates, two XOR gates, two AND gates, and an OR gate. Well, when we built our full adder in Lesson 10, we didn't combine five logic gates because that would have been a large track. Instead, we used a shortcut, first developed by Andreas Schleifenbaum. The idea is to have all three marbles you're adding go through a series of two switches. The first switch separates the first and third marbles from the second marble. As you know, once you count to two in the binary number system, you carry that two over to the next place value. So that second marble gets separated by the switch, and then it does a couple of things. First, it becomes a carry bit and starts to head toward the next place value to be added over there. But second, while on the way, it toggles the position of the second switch so that the first marble does not go into the output landing pad. This makes the ones place a zero. This is because when we carry over to the twos place in the binary number system, we reset the ones place to zero so that the number two is written as a one zero. Then if there is a third marble, that marble goes into the ones place landing pad because three in the binary number system is one one. It's a pretty elegant shortcut. Here is a link to Andreas's video where he built a three bit adder using this concept. Because Andreas relied on a trick of using a piece of track to toggle the second switch, his app code for a one bit full adder would not run in the Gravitrax app. I improved upon his design by using the curve merge trick to make the second marble go backwards through the second switch to toggle it then continue on to get automatically loaded into the adder in the next place value. Afterward, marbles 1 and 3 come along and, depending on the position of the second switch, may end up in the 1's place some bit landing pad. So that's how our full adder works. Now let's examine the timing circuit we've added to our 2-bit adder to make our track fully automatic. You may recall that in Lesson 5 we talked about the clock signal in a digital logic circuit. We talked about how digital logic circuits must wait for their input signals to be ready before they calculate. They do this by calculating in sync with a clock signal. The clock signal in a digital logic circuit gives time for the outputs from the previous logic gates to arrive at the front door of the current logic gate before the current logic gate runs its calculation. Well, what we've done here is we've added some things to our marble computer that act like that clock signal. We start off by replacing the launch pad in our two's place adder with a volcano that can be triggered by a clock marble. We go back to our launch pad of our once place adder and use its empty third slot in the upper right to release a clock marble that starts the timing circuit. That clock marble rolls along a length of track and eventually triggers the volcano in the twos place adder. And that kicks off the twos place adder calculation. But we don't want the twos place adder to start calculating until the ones place adder has completed its calculation. That's because the ones place adder may be passing along a carry bit that needs to be included in the twos place calculation. So we need to make the clock marble track last long enough that the carry bit from the ones place adder can reach the volcano before the clock marble triggers it. Why do we need to use a clock marble at all? Can't we just use the carry bit marble from the ones place to trigger the twos place adder? 
Well, the problem is not all addition problems carry over a one to the twos place. For example, if we add three plus two, that would be written as one one plus one zero. And when we add the ones place in this problem, we add zero plus one, which equals one. So nothing carries over to the twos place. So sometimes we won't have a carry bit to add. And so we need a reliable signal that is always there to trigger the volcano, regardless of whether there is a carry bit. And that's our clock marble signal. We run a clock marble each and every time we run the marble computer. Now, if there is a carry bit, that clock marble needs to allow enough time for the carry bit marble to get loaded in the volcano before the volcano is triggered. So, in our clock marble circuit, we again use our curve merge trick along with a gravity reversing track, which gives the carry bit marble plenty of time to get in place. So that's an overview of what we added. When you run this week's fully automatic two-bit adder, remember these things. One, inputs A and B use the input slots of both the volcano and the launch pad. The volcano will hold the twos place bits and the launch pad will hold the ones place bits. We're using red marbles for input A and blue marbles for input B. So three plus two would look like this. Three in input A and two in input B. We're using, second, we're using the upper right slot of the launch pad to release a clock marble. So every time you run the track, you must put a silver marble in the clock marble slot. If you forget, the volcano will just sit there, which is pretty boring. Number three, you gotta ignore the marbles that roll into the vortexes. We're only counting marbles that end up in the landing pads. And if you don't have three green landing pads, you can use an empty base tile for the third landing pad. And fourth, each time after you run the marble computer, you need to take the following seven steps to reset the track for the next run. Step one, reset all four switches so they are pointing to their right. Step two, remove all remaining marbles from the vortexes and landing pads. Step three, reset the two marble cannons with silver marbles. Step four, reset the scoop. Step five, reset the volcano. Step six, load a clock marble in the upper right slot of the launch pad. You have to do this every time. And step seven, load the numbers you want to add into the slots for input A and input B using red marbles for input A and blue for input B. Okay, we're ready. Let's run our marble computer. Now, I'm not going to run today's marble computer 16 times like I did last week. I'll let you run whatever combinations you want. Think of numbers that you can add that are no greater than 3, and then practice converting those numbers into their binary equivalent numbers to load in the slots of the volcano and the launch pad. So you can load whatever numbers you want. Now I'll just show you some video shots of the fully automatic 2-bit adder marble computer in action.
We're out of time for this week. Next week, I'll share app codes with you for three, four, and five bit adders so you can build the biggest adding computer you can with all your Gravitrax sets. Then the following week, we'll see what our full adder would have looked like had we built it out of those five logic gates. After that, we've got to move on to new pasture for our cattle, leaving behind the land of adders and moving on to the land of subtractors. Okay, see you next week.